it's Matt Sires here, and today I am back for day number 15 of r slash pro revenge, where today I have three stories that set, that look just absolutely crazy to me, and like, like they just seem so crazy that I'm just like, I need to read these, especially with the one at the very end, like on the right side on the top, is actually sub like a somehow a common theme coming over from regular revenge into this episode. But we're gonna start off on the left, then we go to the right side, and then we'll go in the middle. I froze my psycho neighbor out of her apartment. In college, my two friends and I decided to find a place together off campus. We found a beautiful three bedroom house with surprisingly affordable rent. The basement of the house was listed as a separate apartment, but as it had a separate entrance and the indoor stairwell had been blocked off, we weren't worried. And the thermostat was upstairs. Then the demon neighbor moved in. From upstairs, we could hear everything. This adult woman would call her mother and scream at her to pay for her cell phone bills and give her grocery money, aka Taco Bell and cheap tequila. She would scream at whatever guy she was sleeping with to bring her meth. And one day, she brought home three puppies to scream at too. Oh, poor doggos. We were terrified of this woman, and the noise was hell. Also, I'd be, we'd been idiotic enough to sign a lease saying we were responsible for all utilities, period. Meaning we're now financing her gas, water, and electric. But with only two months left on the lease, we thought we could just ride it out. But then she started smoking, constantly. Going to the landlord, she quit for good when she signed the lease, but for good only lasted two days. Since it was winter, the heat was running nearly 24-7, and the smoke was wafting up from the vents. Our apartment and all our belongings began to reek with smoke. We contacted the landlord because we signed a bloody non-smoking we sm signed for a bloody non-smoking apartment. We told uh, he told us we lived in a state where you could you could technically call an apartment non-smoking, even if it shared ventilation with a smoking apartment. Fuck you, leasing lords. Uh, at this point, my two roommates were heading out for a two-week vacation. They were online students while I was residential, leaving me alone in the apartment with the demon smoker in the basement. <laughs> This is reminding of the Minecraft uh, smoker. <laughs> or the the furnace from uh, Home Alone. <laughs> I couldn't eat or sleep because my idiotic stomach decided to react to all the secondhand smoke by ach aching and cramping constantly. After three days, I was a little insane. I made a plan. I checked the forecast. Loads of the trays all week. I borrowed a friend's ultra-insulated sleeping bag. I brought one of those ski masks with the eye holes for your, with the holes for your eyes and mouth. I got out my stocking cap, my silk long underwear, my woolen socks, and my down parker. I bought tea, hot cocoa, and ramen, and prepared to live off a diet of hot liquids. And I turned off the fucking heat. Day one, she's screaming at her mother for forcing her to move into this frozen shithole of an apartment. Day two, she's screaming at her boyfriend uh, slash meth dealer because he won't he won't let her move in with him. Day three, she's screaming at the landlord about how fucking freezing she is. <laughs> uh, day four, the landlord is at my door. I greet him in full ski mask, parka, stocking cap, array, looking like I'm heading out to rob Santa Claus at the North Pole. He asked me if I don't mind it a little chilly in the house. I replied if I found all the cigarette smoke a little... I found all the cigarette smoke a little warm. Day five, she's screaming about the bitches upstairs to anyone who will listen. And I'm si sitting upstairs, clutching my car keys and my pepper spray with 911 typed into my phone. She finally decides she's fucking leaving and moving in with Greg. Even though he just got out for stabbing Travis. And he lives in that fucking creepy house in the woods with all those asshole biting dogs. 
day shit. It's day shit. <laughs> day six, she's gone. I silently, silently Greg, Greg bless. <laughs> I silently bless Greg. Moral of the story, there's a bloody reason the red seemed too good to be true. P.S. For those wondering, I did have a friend who worked plumbing stop by to give me some advice about how low I could go before I burst the water pipes to hell and back. The bitches I've said. <laughs> and we brought Travis into this somehow. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's move on to post box mailbox yanking. <laughs> Redneck thinks it's funny to yank out mailboxes. My dad makes him pay. Disclaimer, this happened a long time ago, but still makes me giggle to this day. So way back in the day, uh, mid-90s or so, my family lived in a log cabin on 10 acres of land in a rural area 10 minutes or so out of town. It wasn't totally the sticks, but you could definitely hear banjo music in the background sometimes. At the end of a nearly quarter mile long driveway was one of those roads that was also technically a state highway. In the AM, I trudged down to wait for the bus. When I got home, I grabbed the mail and carry it back. Until one day, one day, <laughs> one day, <laughs> until one Monday morning when I went out and noticed the mailbox was gone. On closer inspection, on closer inspection, it looked like it had been ripped out of the ground. Dad was obviously not pleased. He went to talk with the county sheriff, who li who happened to live a mile down the road. Turns out it had been happening up and down the road for months. Someone was tossing a chain over mailboxes and yanking them out with their vehicle. He suspected the guy down the road with his great big lifted four-wheel drive truck, but couldn't prove anything. Usually happen on Saturday and Sunday nights with people finding out in the morning. Also seems the nicer the mailbox, the bigger a target. And many had been hit multiple times. People had tried digging deeper, using more durable wood. The guy just took it as a challenge and ripped them out again. Soft, sandy ground, and his truck was a monster. Well, Dad said, challenge fucking accepted. A bit about my father. He's a steel worker with a engineering background and graduate degree. Built like a bear with four arms the size of my freaking legs. Most people looking at him would never think this monster of a man is also brilliant, but he is. The calm, cool type that never, almost never, loses his temper. But wrong him, and God help you. So, go so Dad goes to Lowe's and buys the fanciest, prettiest mailbox they sell. He then proceeds to install it on top of an eight foot long cylinder of three, di three inch diameter hardened tool steel. But he wasn't done there. After digging down with the post holes and dropping it in, he then filled it in with quick set concrete. To really sell it, he then used some strips of half inch wood to cover the steel core of his now indestructible mailbox of doom. Primed and painted them so it looked like a standard four, in four inch post. And even had my mum decorate it with flowers and such. He wanted it to be as tempting as uh, as tempting of a target as possible. Didn't even take a week. I went out for school in the morning and found the mailbox right where it should be, attached to a thirty feet attached to it was thirty feet of chain and an entire hitch assembly, ripped right off the truck's frame, sheared the bolts. It was marvelous to behold. Sheriff gets called over and dies laughing when he sees it. He went to the house of the guy that was suspected and sure enough verified the damage to his truck matched. Fun fact, fucking with a mailbox is a federal crime. As in you go to federal prison, not those cushy state places. Dad was unofficially rewarded by the sheriff's department with a few cases of beer and some venison. And after that, every deputy in town would flash him a thumbs up whenever they saw him. <laughs> See the odd guy was pulling out mailboxes with a chain attached to his truck? That makes invincible mailbox. Guy goes to federal prison. 
Edit. Apparently, vandalism to mailboxes is far more common than I thought, and other people have taken similar me measures. I guess great minds think alike. As many have commented, apparently, uh, federal prison is actually a lot better than state. Didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> but a three inch, eight foot long, di like, eight foot long cylinder of hardened bell. Hard and steel, steel, like tool steel. Holy shit! That is one hell of a oh. How my dad conned a con man, then ruined his conning business. Years ago, shortly after I moved out, my dad decided he wanted to remodel his bathroom and hired a local contractor, who I refer to as DB. To do it, that clog that fixed a clogged sink for him once. From the start, my dad was extremely skeptical of contractors and did not want to get scammed. So after they agreed on the price for labor, my dad asked asked him for an invoice of the cost of all the materials. He 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 took said invoice to one of his co-workers, whose brother-in-law was a plumber or in construction or something to look over the list of materials and see if the quote was fair. And right after that, DB was trying to do a close, trying to do close to a 50% markup on the materials. So instead of paying DB's invoice, my dad just bought all the materials himself, saying he knows a guy who gives him amazing discounts. So DP, DB doesn't get suspicious that my dad was onto his game. After three months, the bathroom is not close to being done, despite DP telling him it would take two months. My dad had to travel for work and would be gone a week, so he asked me to house it, make sure DB shows up to work and does not steal shit. Right off the bat, DB tries to be all buddy-buddy with me, but I did not like the guy and just brushed him off, asking how the bathroom was going. Over the course of the week, DB tried to tried to upsell me on a bunch of things he said he said needed to be done to finish the bathroom. Most of it was electrical work, which he did not have a license for. My dad filled me in before he left about what was quoted in the labor, and there was no electrical work quoted. And I told him I told him to just stick to the original quote. Once my dad came comes back, I fill him in on all the additional charges. The B tried to tack on. He also did not show up for three days, saying he hurt his shoulder tripping over his cat. Then he tried to install the new ceiling light, which he was not asked to install because we had an electrician to, coming to install it. After a heated conversation, uh, after a heated discussion between DB and I, he stopped installing the ceiling light inside the laying tile, during which he broke a quarter of the tiles. After this, Debacle, my dad did some investigating and looked up DB's license and found that and found out that not only was the license license expired, it did not belong to DB. So my dad asked so my dad asked my brother and I to come over when he was going to going to confront DB about lying about his license. A very heated argument broke out when my dad refused refused to let DB en to enter the house to collect his tools and said we would bring the tools out to him. DB then threatened to press charges against me for assault when I accidentally brushed his shoulder when I was passing him in the hallway and I refused to apologize. After the cops showed up, DB quickly tried to play the victim but the cops told DB to collect his tools and leave. The bathroom's still unfinished but my dad did not have to pay DB for his three months of labor and used that money to hire the hire real contractors to finish the bathroom. It only took them a week and a half to finish. After this, my dad contacted the local news to tell him about DB being a con man. A few months later, the news did an investigation story about him, and they found other people DB scammed. With DB would start to work on their bathroom, but once he got paid, he would cut and run, leaving the bathroom unfinished and stealing all the materials. The news then set up a sting for DB and exposed him for being a con man, and he was arrested not long after the news story aired. 
Edit, uh, TLDR, Batman, Batman tried, hired to redo Dad's bathroom, tried to rip Dad off, Dad fires Batman for lack of licenses and for being an asshole. Dad tells local news about Batman, local news exposes Batman, Batman eventually gets arrested. Batman. <laughs> it's just bad, man. <laughs> Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're going to con someone, you need to make it look convincing. you got to be convincing if you're going to con someone. Hey. Like, if you're going to con someone, you make it look convincing, and that's all I can say about that. Also, I will just say, don't con people. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to end this episode here. Links will be in the description to the main channel and also the channel that you're on right now, the second channel, where there's links to the playlist and the last episode on the screen. Go check them out. There's over 100 episodes available at this point. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when next video comes out. A ding, a ding. I'm a mad scientist. Mad Scientist, out.